we've put on the docket to double our foreign service. I think we should double again. I think we ought to go to 4,000. So the um, numbers are now are roughly 2,000? 2,000 is what we have 2000. in the budgets. Right. Um, hoping that Congress will go with us. How many do you have actually on staff now? A little over a thousand. A little over a thousand. So, so in the budget you've to got to two thousand. I think we should double again to four thousand. Mm -hmm. I mean, I would hope one could do that in the next five years. Mm -hmm. um, I think we need to strongly increase in civil service and in foreign service nationals. We need to pay attention to foreign service national pay, their compensation, and their grades. It is something that has um, not been keeping up, and it needs to. You know, we've underinvested in infrastructure in Africa for decades, and Africa needs help, and development needs help, and it's a time when we can be mutually beneficial and mutually helpful for the United States as well as the developing world. Mm -hmm. So we should make that case. This is not a time to pull back in to retreat. Mm -hmm. It's a time to make our case strongly and clearly as to why development is in our national interest and in our economic self-interest. Mm -hmm. um, I think the idea of focusing our assistance in areas that we think are most important and getting accountability and measurement for results mm -hmm. is important. Mm -hmm. I think consolidating the authorities, um, the funding, this idea that USAID and the administrator of UIDEA is first among other development agencies is a really important organizational as well as intellectual basis for the United States. Mm -hmm. Foreign assistance reform, I think, has really improved. I did pledge to collaborate and communicate and try to streamline, and uh, I believe we've made real strides on that. We have reduced the burden on our missions between 20 and 80 percent in the last year. We have focused on country-based programming. The burden, it, it, the burden in what way? Uh, it, paperwork, mm -hmm. time it takes to fill out all of our paperwork, mm -hmm. and um, that has between really, 20 and 80 percent. Yes, mm -hmm. and that is important wow. for okay. our people. Uh, we have lots of jobs to do, and it's not to fill out paperwork mm -hmm. for Washington. And I uh, was in Doha. Uh, last week, and we were reviewing the Monterey Consensus. So I thought I'd tell you a little bit about what that was like, if that would sound interesting to you. Because as the last administrator of an administration, <clears throat> you begin to reflect on what has happened over eight years, but also what has happened in your own term. And um, <clears throat> I think a couple of things stood out. The first is that we all began thinking about development differently after the Monterey meeting. It really became country ownership directed, the idea of mutual accountability, the idea that we as a donor community bore a responsibility, but that the developing countries also bore a responsibility. And as that began, pledges were made, and the United States pledged um, an increase of 50% in our development assistance. We met that goal, and we met it three years early. And it was one of the things that is not known in the world. The NGOs that were in Doha, the developing countries that were in Doha, the bilateral organizations, other development donors didn't know that. So one of the things that, that strikes you immediately, and Nancy luckily was with us, um, and Sam Worthington and others, who spoke about what the United States is doing for the world, but it is extremely important for the United States to speak up about what we are doing. Glen Eagles, we then made um, additional uh, commitments. And while the United States is not on a trajectory that is a flat line, given um, the amount that we have in the pipeline, and if our appropriations come through, we should more than meet our uh, commitments. Um, but when you look around the world, it is not true for many other countries. Um, let me follow up on, you made the comment about the, the elevation to development as part of the national security strategy as part of a, a three-pronged approach uh, alongside defense uh, and diplomacy. How do you think that has changed the way that development is viewed in the interagency, within government, in the interagency process, both within the executive branch, also on Capitol Hill? Um, uh, and where do you see that going forward? I don't think anyone would would claim that they're equal partners yet, 
Uh, but I think by putting it in the, the national security strategy, it certainly put development at the table. So how do you think that has changed the discussion and the dialogue? Um, I think it's been very important. I think it was one of the most important things that we as a community could do. I think it's also very important for the development that we do. It is actually how we do our work. We do it in concert with others. What I do not feel is that it has taken hold within the interagency structure, mm -hmm. which is why the Development Policy Coordinating Committee um, that uh, I've begun chairing is important, but it's also why the good suggestions that are out there with elevating the level of development within the NSC, um, the idea of relooking at the funding, because this idea about not being an equal partner is a very important part, so that if DOD has funding here and state has it here and AID has it here, you just need to bring up, you need to strengthen this part of the three parts of development. I also think that as the world has become more complicated and more insecure, that the importance of development has become all the more important and that we all as a community need to continually talk about the solutions of development and the solutions that development brings. It is not perfect, but together in national security, it is an extremely powerful tool. And if we integrate it well, it is something that the United States needs that's in our national security interest. Mm -hmm. 